Americans spent many hours watching the inhumanity and hardship experienced by the citizens of New Orleans and the Mississippi Delta following Hurricane Katrina. The storm was one of the first natural disasters where the 24-hour news cycle shone a light on the failures of the government to protect and save the public. After watching the suffering, many were moved to help either through donations or giving of their time. This is David Smith, Sr., an activist in the community and longtime volunteer. David is no stranger to sacrificing his time for the good of others. I was a volunteer here in St. Bernard Parish for the past 24 years after I was paralyzed in a car accident. As you can see, this is what's left of my home after Katrina. I didn't think I'd ever see my home rebuilt again. I spent the past two years living in a FEMA trailer, waiting to die in a FEMA trailer. Now, three years since the vicious storm, this veteran volunteer is getting the help he so richly deserves. I'm Ashley Ramos. I'm Emily Wasserman. And um, we are here with the Sid Jacobson JCC program. We're helping to build, decided to reconstruct the homes after Hurricane Katrina hit um, over two years ago. And um, it's, we gave up our December vacation because we thought that there, we really, there's nothing else I could think of that is more rewarding than doing something like this. And it's, it's just so unbelievable to see personally the faces and like of these people after their homes have been destroyed and they've all stayed so positive about it. And it's just, it's really humbling, the whole experience. Everything here was once amazing and now it's been ruined and I'd like to get it back to the way it was. Uh, and I'm willing to sacrifice my vacation, anything it takes to get this done. It's kind of sad that all these homes were once like any other homes and now they, just because of a hurricane, they got ruined and they have to start from scratch. And we're here to help them. We saw a lot of the destruction and it was, it was really devastating to see what had actually happened. And it was, like a big accomplishment to figure out that we finished this and that some like there's a more of a chance that somebody might move back. For me this was much more as a Catholic what Christmas is to me is to practice giving instead of receiving and this is a perfect thing for me. I came out here to give instead of staying home and receiving a bunch of gifts and that's practically what I'm trying because I've been pretty spoiled up to this point and just when I heard about New Orleans like I felt like this would be a great great idea to to do that, you know, and help others. My Christmas present that the only thing I got for Christmas this year is a whole group of volunteers. Uh, I walked outside my, my front door and I seen a rainbow from the beginning to the end and 20 minutes later I found out I was going to have some 16 volunteers helping me today. If there were more, more people like this in America that would volunteer that time to help put people back in their homes, uh, thanks would be immense and uh, if you ever needed us, I'm pretty sure most of us would pack up our things and come, come to you. So I, I would like to see a permanent facility built uh, where they have to put in 35 hours of community service and uh, actual accountability. That way the state has something, uh, something to grasp onto so they could fund this and make this, make this really happen. And uh, they put in their hours in that community service, they'll have a, a fed meal and a, a free place to stay. I just want to thank you volunteers for everything y'all have done. This, uh, this storm has been where we have seen some of the best in America and some of the most scummiest people in the world that have come here for some of their own self gain. But to see these young people that are, are here to do something, not to fill their pockets, is, is truly amazing. A lot of the people here that are doing this work are doing it genuinely from their heart and genuinely trying to improve our lives.
AmeriCorps National Civilian Community Corps is an organization that brings 18 to 25 year olds in to do community service projects. And we mainly work down in the Gulf Coast region. AmeriCorps Western Region currently has 22 teams down here in the Gulf region. And um, Camp Hope is where we house um, a lot of our uh, NCCC members that come in to work for various um, projects like Habitat for Humanity. Uh, just that, we house volunteers for a number of other groups. Some of our partner, partner organizations are the St. Yeah. Bernard Project, the uh, Hope Worldwide, uh, Hands On, uh, the New Orleans Recovery School District. Uh, we will house volunteers from, from any group as long as we have space. The idea is uh, to provide an inexpensive but comfortable place for people to stay during their volunteer work weeks down here in uh, the Gulf region. I am Timothy Howard. I'm from Kentucky. I am a member of AmeriCorps NCCC. Uh, what kind of brought me about down here was that when I was going through high school and I was going through college, there's a lot of trouble spots in the world. And I always felt like I should do something, but because of high school and because of college and because of those responsibilities, I didn't have the time or I didn't feel like I could dedicate as much of myself to these problem spots as I felt was needed. So after I finished college, I realized that I did not have a family yet, I didn't have any established job, and I had the time in my life to volunteer for one of these organizations. And so I did some research and found AmeriCorps and Triple C. And with their 10 month program, I decided that that would be a good thing for me, you know help out in the United States, which I think it's important to, while well, there are other problem spots in the world, I think it's important to help out at home. So I signed up for the program and trained for a month in California. And then our first project, our first of four projects, uh, they sent us to Camp Hope in St. Bernard's Parish. So now I have learned how to uh, do siding, uh, painting interiors. Hopefully I'll get a chance to learn how to do framing roofing soon. And I worked in the Habitat Warehouse for two weeks, so I also learned how to work a forklift, which is my new favorite tool. And uh, yeah, had a great time. Everybody's very, very enjoyable to work with, very pleasant, very understanding of your situation. And definitely everybody has their own story, whether it has to do with the hurricane and, and the locals or the volunteers who come down here and how they did it. So yeah, uh, really happy I'm down here and looking forward to more time. I was here in March with a music group. I was on tour, and um, I fell in love with New Orleans very unexpectedly. I was um, a senior in college in New York City, and I assumed I would stay in New York City just because that's what most people who I went to school with did, and that's what my plan had been for most of college. Um, and so all of a sudden, here I am, March of senior year, saying, I'm going to move to New Orleans. Um, and I didn't really care what job I was doing here, so I did a very wide-ranging job search. I just looked in a variety of different fields, and to my great surprise, ended up working in construction, um, which is not what you usually do with a degree in um, musical anthropology, but that's what I'm doing with it, and I love it. I love every day of it, so it's great fun. Um, Habitat is a really fun organization to work with, and you know, people s often say, oh, you know, it's so good of you to give a year of your life and, and to give your time, but in all honesty, you know, it doesn't feel like it's something I'm doing just for other people because it's also definitely for myself as well because the city is incredible and it's a really interesting place to live and to sort of spend my time when I'm young. Um, and the people who I work with are just fantastic and of course the volunteers are great. Everybody who comes down and just donates their time is amazing. Um, and it's a great experience as well to, to be using my brain in a very different way and getting to use my body as well after four years of college. Hi, my name is Mary McVeigh. I'm a member of AmeriCorps and Triple C from the Western Region Campus, Sacramento. Um, I've I've been down here for about a month now with my team of uh, 11 core members um, doing some community service in the Camp Hope kitchen. We are cooking for anywhere to 400, between 400 and 700, maybe sometimes even 800 volunteers. It's a different kind of community service. I was down here last year for about six months doing a variety of rebuilding and construction projects. Um, so this is a nice change working with the community members, for the community members, feeding them, um, getting to share with them, interact with them in a, a different way. So there's a lot of different kinds of volunteer work that can be done besides um, rebuilding. So come on down and check it out. I first came down to um, Hattiesburg, Mississippi in May to serve as the administrative assistant for the Gulf Coast office, office which is in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. 
Um, Jules Hampton is the director down here. And I had a wonderful experience. And then I moved on to doing a summer of service program in July which was held at Xavier University. We brought inner city um, kids from New Orleans, 18 to 14 to 17 year olds, and they um, learned what serving their community was all about, and we had a wonderful time. That was a month long, and I am now back as the Camp Hope support team leader to serve for a month. One of the things that I, I tell our people at orientation each week is that it's important that you're here doesn't matter if you lift a finger while you're here. There are people down here who have been, had their faith in humanity restored just by the fact that volunteers are coming, that they know that someone cares for them. Uh, there, uh, I spoke with a local resident here who told me that he sat on the roof of his house for five days waiting for someone to come and rescue him and his father and his mother, elderly father and mother. He lost his mother during that five-day period, and uh, he said he had lost faith in everything. But the people coming here to Camp Hope have restored his faith. So it's important that people show that they care about their fellow Americans, fellow uh, community members in, in the St. Bernard Parish, Louisiana area, uh, and, and give back just by being. Travel Television began as an effort to help Volunteers of America, who coordinated the volunteers coming to New Orleans to help the rebuild. Many people volunteered with organizations. On various days, there were 300 volunteers or more at Habitat for Humanity, and they had enough tools for 100 individuals, while at the same time, 20 people showed up to volunteer for Common Ground, and they had resources that could handle 100. Travel Television created short videos for some of the nonprofits working on the rebuild to help raise their profile and increase their volunteer participation. Here's one of their stories from Common Ground. Um, I, my name is Dar. I've been in New Orleans. I'm going to be here for two weeks. Um, I'm working, helping out in the Lower Ninth Ward, where this is where a lot of the worst damage occurred. Um, the the levees right there. Um, we need as many people to come down as possible. There's still a lot of work to be done, and Common Ground um, is the organization, nonprofit organization I'm with. Um, it's an amazing community developed group to help whoever needs help. We get houses and supply clothing and food and materials to help you rebuild your home and community. And yeah, people, we really need people to come down because this is an amazing place, and the people here are incredible, and the world. The government is not helping the people as the way it should be helping, and so the people are taking action, and that, that's what this group is all about. So we would really appreciate all the help we can get, money, food, clothing, your body to help come down here. So please come. Thank you. The cities of Bay St. Louis and Waveland, Mississippi, were totally cut off during the storm. With the failure of the bridge and water surrounding the cities, Disaster recovery and assistance were slowed for the first several months after the disaster. Travel Television visited with some of the volunteers who came to rebuild these cities. My name is Rick Rectine. I'm from Rollo, Missouri. Came down in about mid-May to help my brother out, Mike, who's in uh, charge of AmeriCorps, New York chapter, Seneca chapter here in Bay St. Louis, and fell in love with the people down here and the work that was going on. I uh, really captured my heart. I went back and picked up my youngest son and we came down. I've been here ever since. My other son's been down. My mom and my dad have been down here. It's kind of a family affair, but I'm um, working with St. Rose de Lima Church here in Bay St. Louis, and also with Hands On out of Biloxi, which is having a site here in Bay St. Louis also for volunteers wanting to come down and get some work accomplished. St. Rose de Lima Parish takes basic responsibility for re-roofing homes, uh, gutting homes, drywalling, taping, mudding, and, and go ahead and finishing them out sometimes on different bases. Uh, I'm in charge of the construction of the homes. We have a lot of different teams working different things. I know we've, uh, we've done 60-something roofs since the storm down here, and have got a lot of families back in their homes, or at least big steps back towards their homes. The money comes from different churches around, the diocese that have adop adopted the Catholic Church here, and other churches and other individuals, and it's, uh, they've done a world of good down here. 
Hi there, my name is Marla Schofer, and we're here at, um, in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, at a Habitat for Humanity work site where we are working on 10 homes that are being built. The one behind me is called a Blitz Home, which means that we will be putting up this entire home start to finish from slab to move-in condition within one week, which is pretty amazing if you've ever seen a home before. Um, this is my first experience with uh, doing anything with Habitat. I'm a, I'm a volunteer. I've never worked on a house before except for some minor house painting. And what I've been doing uh, the last couple of days is putting up siding, um, putting on some roof material, uh, building a kitchen, all th things I've never done before that I'm learning how to do. And I also would like to tell you that this is my vacation. This is not my typical idea of a vacation that I would go on, but um, I chose to do it because I was really concerned about what was going on down here in New Orleans. I initially got connected down here through Habitat, and they're working with a local organization that's called Lanyap Church, which actually is a mission that was uh, put together right after Katrina to come down and help build houses. Um, and what they did is they built sort of army barrack housing with 290 bunk beds, and for $20, $20 a day, I get a bunk and three meals and you know shower and toilet facilities it's a bit rustic but um you know look what you're look what you're doing and look what you're working on so it's uh if you think about it as a vacation it's probably the probably the least expensive vacation you could ever take and probably the most rewarding that you could ever do in your life it's just been an incredible experience for me i'm meeting really good people and uh it's really worthwhile uh, there's still a ton of work to do down here in Mississippi and in Louisiana. I think that um, we're not seeing a lot of it anymore in the news and the media, but um, it's going to be years and years before things are cleaned up here. And, and there's a lot of people that are living in FEMA trailers. They don't have homes to live in. Um, the, the countryside is um, landscaped with homes that have been blown apart. And uh, I would encourage anybody who, who can come down here to, uh, to try to get a trip down here. It's really worthwhile, and it's probably um, one of the more interesting trips I've ever taken, and I think it's going to have a big effect on my life. To see volunteer stories, go to www. You can see some of their furniture has been taken out, uh, all their personal belongings photos it, it it's a real it's a real mess in there and they this family really need needs help and just getting the basic first step in putting their lives back together which is getting all the debris out of their house so we can go take a tour the Baron Builders group um, is working on this house as well helping them take it out again this is the FEMA provided trailer this is what this family has been living in since the hurricane you can see the water line here, and I'll explain the X. Most of the houses in this neighborhood have this orange X. This orange X means that after the hurricane, a couple days after, uh, authorities from various agencies come and checked every house to see if there are any people who needed rescue and also if there were any um, deceased. The X means that the house had been checked. Now, the lettering, NO, I'm a believe, means New Orleans, and ANS is some agency. That me that's the agency that checked the house. So you'll see different houses have different, different uh, letters on it, which means a different agency checked it. Now, you don't see it in this house, but sometimes you see a zero underneath the X or a number. If there's a zero, that means that there are no deceased in the house. However, if there, was a, if there is a number, that means that they did find bodies there. Also sometimes on the X's, they also put the date where they, where they uh, checked uh, the house. But we're gonna come inside and look at what's going on in here. But be careful from the flying debris. So we're taking out this house, this demo work right here. You can see there's still some personal belongings here shelves, clothes. Now the back is really something that you want to see. The back of the house has been untouched in nine months. They have a child, this was the child's room, the computer, everything. These are all her belongings. 
everything is still here. This has been like this for nine months and this family still has not had uh, help in being able to clean it up. All the black stuff on the walls is mold. Um, really devastation. The refrigerator in the kitchen here is like this. It floated from the water. It was turned over like this. Who knows what's inside? We haven't even had a chance to check. But as you can see, I mean, this, this is a family's house and it has not yet been cleared out. There's a lot of devastation here, a lot of mold. You can see all over here, it's completely uninhabitable. You can't live in here at all. So this is, this is some real devastation right here. Um, so hopefully we can get this family started in, in putting their lives back together. This is St. John the Evangelist. They're from Indiana. Okay. Uh, they came down here to help you out. Thank you. Um, Miss Parshall renovated her home. She's very proud of her home uh, right before the storm. And she was also a collector of uh, antique dolls. Of antique dolls. Mm -hmm. And um, she has a lot of family heirlooms that she would like to see if she has them here. Uh, Lori and Elaine will be going through um, the home and figure out the best way to organize you guys. Mm -hmm. It's going to be kind of tight at first. Um, the Army Corps of Engineers does not want us to bag anything, so uh, we, we take the belongings and the, the small things and we put them in the garbage cans and we just dump it out on the curb, unfortunately. Um, there's limited space, so we may start on the other side. Um, do you know if they began work on the, the home across the street? Um, they, it's okay. Um, it's okay. They're all good friends, neighbors of mine. They know okay. I'm the last to gut on this side, okay. except one or two. But they know, um, I've talked to both of them. They said I could put whatever I want on next door. Okay, they, yeah. they, no problem. They got a house over on other street. That was their mother that died. So okay. they, we could put from his house, this house next door. I figure across the street so much carrying. Mm -hmm. We can load in front of the neck, both next door neighbors. Okay, with right. no problem. We have to do it between the sidewalk and the street. We right. Go out All the guy the on the corner, because he's died, the man okay. on the corner. And Mr. Como's sons live out of state, so they're not worried they're going to mm -hmm. eventually bulldoze, they said. Okay. So um, they right. said I can use whatever I need. If okay, I, great. You know, so. Thank you. And we're going to point out the, uh, the main water drains that we ask that you guys do not cover, because they're coming in with the bobcats and digging them up and breaking up the water mains. We waste about 85 to 100 million gallons of water a year. So the water small. drain is right here by that little green thing that's okay. on the front lawn. That's one. Across the street's another. And then in front of Mr. Stokes' house next door, a little toward the corner. Yes, okay. Those are the only two you got to worry about. Okay, and we are going to be turning off the main water at your home. Okay, uh, that would be on the front corner, right, right on the front street, right by the yes, green right. thing, the little round meter. Okay, she found the valves are, um, are corroded, and you know, sometimes we'll oh, take, okay. them off, take out the sinks and everything. Okay. We find that they leak anyway. Okay. So we're going to turn that off for you guys too. We make sure that the electric and the gas is all turned off. Safety. Um, they took the gas meters out, so gas right, meters no gone. Gas. Excellent. So Miss Parcel is going to be in this room primarily, and um, we're just going to be passing through. If you guys see anything salvageable, just ask Miss Parcel. Just put it on the side here, and we'll dig into it. And my friends and all, my my, my girlfriends and all, we're going to 
go through it and we'll throw trash up here. You know, I mean, there's nothing more else they can take. I got a dumpster in the backyard now. Oh, there is a dumpster. I saw that. It floated in. <laughs> it floated in. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it, it, it took its wave, you know. Yeah, so so it treated I got a dumpster in the backyard. <laughs> it took my pool out the hole, you know. It floated away, so. Mm. And all my, my, my little trinkets of floating creatures, you know, my Nemo and yeah. all my turtles and all my little fishies. We found some of them now, but it's just, you know, horrendous but you know God God sent me you guys you know and it meant so much to me you know and it you know, worked with me on this because I've been sick health bonds you know and, and well you've taken well, care of people in the past and now it's yeah. time for people to help you yeah. and now it's time for us to, to help you out yeah. so we're going to have one person working outside too to help organize files that way when somebody comes out you can direct them where to go to help speed things up I got um, ice water if y'all need it in the ice chest if y'all need thank some you. Thank bottle you. water, thank you know, yes. Yeah. I'm just going to take a sonic. Yes, ma'am. It's a release of liability. I've got it down every day. I had people in here, all new studs from termite damage. It was I mean, tell us a beautiful home. horrendous of damage I had in here. And, I mean, I had just finished this and all, like I said, all new, the bedroom furnishes. Unbelievable. I've got doll collection 30 years old. $2,000 piece dolls just in ruination. Okay. I got collections of stuff that's over 100 years old. An antique dresser in there that was a King Edwardian. Mm -hmm. And it's just in pieces. I just cannot believe what water can do. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, destructive force. Yeah, if anything yeah. looks salvageable, we'll put off the okay. side in here. That's why we cleaned this room out. We That's said, we'll give y'all a help in here. Y'all did a lot of work, so I came in here before and I kind of looked at the window. <laughs> yeah. Was it was horrendous, yeah, but we got in here for the last week and we've been coming two and three days. That's about all I could stand. These you know? are our okay, best well, blessed, and okay. they sent us here. He sent us here, and our, our whole parish is here to support you because we brought food and all kinds of things for your community. And so here's some, some blessed crosses for you and your brother. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. So now you're part of our family, too. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you all very you. much. To see volunteer stories, go to www.projectkatrinavolunteers.net.